you may not be able to tell on account of the fact that I kind of suck at it, but I actually put a lot of time and effort into editing these videos. I used to use Premiere Pro, but recently switched to DaVinci Resolve to reduce the strain on my wallet. Instead of learning a whole new set of tendonitis inducing keyboard shortcuts, I wanted to make a device to speed up my editing process in Resolve. I wanted something like a macro pad, but more ergonomic and with controls suited to the task rather than just a grid of keyboard keys. The first step was selecting some components. Now, I often use Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano development boards for these projects, but I decided to go with something a little bit different this time. I chose to use an Adafruit KB2040 development board, which is based on the Raspberry Pi RP2040 microcontroller. I chose to use the Adafruit KB2040 because it runs CircuitPython and because it can be easily set up as a USB HID. That means that the computer will just see it as a regular keyboard. Then I needed to select some input components with the first being these really cool metal ball tactile buttons. They look really interesting and have a very nice clicky feel to them. But I wanted more than just regular buttons, so I also picked up an Adafruit Anno rotary navigation uh, input thing. It's a lot like these scroll wheels on old iPods with a central button and then like an outer scrolling disk thing with also directional buttons up, down, left, and right. I paired that with their Stemma QT adapter board, which just makes it really easy to connect to the KB2040 board. I already had a strip of NeoPixel LEDs, and so my final purchase was just a basic three-way toggle switch from Amazon. While waiting on those parts to arrive, I decided to start work on designing the enclosure. I've seen people use clay to sculpt these sort of things for similar projects, and they always say it doesn't work out, but I thought I might try my luck anyway. The goal was to 3D scan this, so I used this peppy plastilina modeling clay stuff that has this purple color that I thought would show up well on the 3D scanner. Now, it actually did scan really well, but I couldn't just use that scan as it was. I needed to use that scan as a reference for the 3D model that I would then create in CAD, which proved to be really difficult. I'm not a CAD novice by any means. I did it for a living for a long time, and I even wrote a book on modeling in Fusion 360. But mesh modeling and surface modeling are pretty frustrating, and so it took me quite a long time to get something that matched the scan pretty well, but was also 3D printable. By that time, my orders had arrived, and so I turned my attention back to prototyping the electronics. Thankfully, this part was really easy. Connecting buttons and the switch is straightforward, and the Adafruit Stemma QT connector for the Anno navigation wheel is also pretty easy. It just uses their Seesaw library. The circuit Python code was also pretty simple. At this point, I had to admit that my enclosure design was just bad. Sure, it was ergonomic, but it was also really ugly and very difficult to fit the electronics into. So I went back to the drawing board and designed a completely new enclosure that is a lot more practical. It is a solid model with mostly flat surfaces, which makes it a lot easier to mount components. To mount the three buttons, I designed a really simple PCB in KiCad, or KiCad if that's your thing. And that's where this video's sponsor, PCBWay, came in. I sent them my design file and they sent me back a really beautiful PCB that I could then use for this project. As always, the quality was absolutely fantastic. And in case you didn't know, PCBWay also has 3D printing services. In fact, I had them resin print the final enclosure for this project. If you want to give PCBWay a try, you can use my link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order. While I waited on the resin printed enclosure to arrive from PCBWay, I was able to put together a prototype using parts I 3D printed on my Bamboo Lab P1S. The base is clear PLA so that the LEDs can shine through, and heat set inserts let me attach all the components to that base. Though I did have to use hot glue for the KB2040 board since it didn't have any mounting holes. 
with this prototype together, I was able to test everything and make sure it worked properly and get ready for the final build. Once I received the resin printed enclosure, I was able to put together the final device, and this is it. I'm calling it the bear claw because its shape kind of reminds me of the pastry. And now you know why the PCB has that bear imagery. <laughs> As usual, this is an open source design, and there is a link in the description to Hackster where you can find the 3D models, PCB files, and code if you want to build your own bear claw. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.